Hi everybody, thanks for joining us right now. First up tonight at 530, Thanksgiving is coming. And for some of you, it'll be the first time in a long time that you're getting on an airplane. And in recent weeks, we have seen really widespread cancellations and delays all over the country. So the question is, if this happens to you, what can you do? We sent Chief Investigative Reporter Matthew Campbell to find out what your rights are as a passenger. I found out the night before I was supposed to leave that my six o'clock flight got canceled. A trip to a Jimmy Buffett convention in Key West last month was anything but paradise for Nancy Heron. Even though they tried to book me two days later. She says if American Airlines had rescheduled her two days later, she'd have missed some of the convention. It's frustrating and I thought I was safe because I had the first flight out in the morning. Nancy was one of the thousands of flyers who fell victim to unexpected last minute cancellations or delays. So I don't know if it was they didn't have the flight crew, they didn't have a pilot. It's a recent unwelcome airline trend and travel expert Peter Greenberg explains why it seems to be happening more often. And then the airlines, seeing how many people were flying, doubled and tripled down on their schedule and added all these new routes to cities they'd never flown before. So they took everybody even more stretched then. On top of that, add in vaccine mandates. Since that started at some airlines, passengers feel things have gotten worse. From my understanding, it's because they don't have the flight crews. The mandate also impacts TSA workers who are government employees. You're understaffed, you're overscheduled, and then you have weather. That is a prescription for a meltdown. While Nancy was flying American, that airline hasn't been the only one to have a recent meltdown that stranded passengers. Because what happened at Spirit, what happened at Southwest, and what recently happened at American is a pretty strong indication that you can't operate that way. Do you know what your rights are as a passenger? I don't know. So we set out to find those answers, and unfortunately, Greenberg says in the majority of cases, customers are at the mercy of the airline. There are no laws protecting us. Nothing is spelled out in rules. It's really up to the airlines to figure out what they want to give you. They don't actually give you an explanation. They, they just, just say, hey, your flight's delayed, and this is what we're going to do. So with that in mind, we're working to craft a blueprint so you can have the most hassle-free travel experience. It starts early on in the booking process. Greenberg says there's one type of ticket you should never buy. Basic economy. A basic economy ticket is use it or lose it. So if you look at the next fair category up from basic economy, you'll find that it only costs you about $30 more, but that's your insurance policy so that if you have to cancel, you're not going to lose your money. Now that you have your ticket, how early do you have to get to the airport these days? At the very least, three hours ahead. That's because long lines at security have also caused travelers to miss flights. You can try to get compensation through a complaint with TSA, but Greenberg says don't hold your breath. You can do it, but you have to prove damages and you're making a claim against the government. This could take years. Greenberg says you're really not safe until you make your destination. He says book nonstop flights if possible. That's because tight layover times have been a source for missed connecting flights. Coming back to New England, Nancy had less than an hour to connect in Charlotte, and she missed it. This, this was the worst experience I've had in all the time that I've traveled, yes. Believe me, a 37-minute connect, 37 connect time is suicidal. Greenberg's advice is to space out travel and start your day as early as possible. So give yourself at least a 90 minute connect time and start from the beginning. Try to get the very first flight of the day out and ask if that particular aircraft assigned to your flight actually arrived the night before and overnighted at your departure airport. That means the crew did too. You have a reasonably good chance of getting out. Now here's another travel tip from Greenberg. Years ago when you missed your flight, airlines would work together to get you on another flight, even if that meant getting you on a different carrier. Nowadays, those interline airline agreements, they are hard to come by. In fact, some like Southwest, they don't have them at all, and that could lead to even bigger backups. We're here at Bradley, Matthew Campbell, Channel 3 News.